Hello everybody, um, if you are new to this channel, uh, my name is TK Sifkin. I am a research assistant for the Zoological Museum of Zürich, soon to become the Natural History Museum. And I have a blog called manospondylus.com where I write about the history of paleontology. And yeah, first things first, uh, the title of this video will seem very provocative, especially in the modern age. We, we have all seen the H Bomber guy video, which has just absolutely nuked YouTube for a time. And yeah, right now seems like a very trendy time to frivolously accuse other people on YouTube of plagiarism, kind of to ride the wave of that, let's say, hype. But it's not what I want to do here. I don't like drama. I don't like to be involved in drama. I don't want to start any drama. I'm making this video because I think something genuinely concerning happened. So you see in 2022 on my blog I wrote two posts about the history of Diplodocus reconstructions. These were basically a comprehensive compilation of the research I had done for the museum because you see uh, this March we will have a brand new dinosaur exhibit where we will also exhibit a uh, a genuine Diplodocus skeleton and my boss tasked me, because I also study history, uh, with studying the research history of Diplodocus. So we have as many like bits of trivia and tidbits and illustrations as possible for the exhibit. So um, fast forward now to yesterday as of recording, February 10th, 2024. And the YouTube channel EDGE Edge, hosted by Destin Bogart, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, uploads a video titled When Sauropods Were Whales, Diplodocus Through the Decades. And yeah, I see that in my uh, subscription box, and I think like, Oh, that's neat, like their videos are usually well researched. Maybe they found something that I missed in my original thingy. And then I watched the video and as I was watching, I was realizing something. I, I was going like, oh no, oh God, fucking no, dear God. First, uh, the general structure the and sectioning is the same as that of my blog posts and all of the almost all of the cited paleo art examples are the same as is the information that is attached to them and of course that could just be a coincidence i mean that this is freely available information maybe he was just reading the same sources as i was but then things get more fishy when he starts mentioning like really obscure stuff, like stuff that in the paleo online sphere only I ever really talked about, you know, like John C. McLaughlin's uh, satire piece of an aquatic sauropod. World. A spoof of the idea was sketched by John C. McLaughlin in 1979. But this is clearly not meant to be taken realistically, even to the thoughts of these creatures at the time. Or Adrian J. Desmond's thoughts on Edward Drinker Cope's sketches. Pictured. Few people are aware that the picture is based on an earlier sketch by Cope. Cope deliberately depicted the creatures as bipedal in this image, making it seem like a larger-than-life version of a modern interpretation of Platyosaurus. The date of this sketch is also uncertain. Although the sketch is often dated to the same period as Knight's picture, Adrian Desmond surmised that it may be much older, possibly from the 1870s, when the majority of dinosaurs were still believed to be bipeds. If accurate, this picture might provide evidence for a very short window of time in the history of sauropod studies when these creatures were thought to be enormous bipeds. That's like very, that's from some like very obscure books, to be honest. And 
that makes it very unlikely that this is just a coincidence, especially since I do know that he reads my blog. We will get to that later. And when my alarm bells truly started going off was when I noticed some of my very own ideas, like things that are my opinion that are not published by some other author that you can find in the library, being presented by Destin as his own ideas. For example, in my blog I say that I imagine that Richard Owen's original vision of Cetiosaurus may have been may have looked a little like the Mosasaurus from Jurassic World. And in his video, Destin says that he thinks that Owen's Cetiosaurus may have looked like the JW uh, Mosasaurus. And I'm like, really Destin, you think that? Or was I the one who was doing the thinking? Uh, okay, I channeled Christopher Walken there, I'm sorry. The French vertebrate paleontologist Georges Cuvier easily classified them as belonging to a whale when they were initially delivered to him. This was despite the fact that they originated from sediments that were Mesozoic in age. Paleontologist Sir Richard Owen studied the bones more thoroughly in 1841, a year before he would coin the word dinosauria. He properly recognized them as belonging to a huge reptile, not only because of the age, but also because the vertebrae were hollow. Whale bones, like the bones of most mammals, are solid. This was the first time the critter had accurately been identified as an enormous reptile, but Owen did not proceed to include the reptile into his concept of the dinosaurs. In its place, he conceived of the creature as a huge cousin of crocodilians and gave it the name Cetiosaurus, which literally translates to whale lizard. He claimed that Cetiosaurus was the reptile counterpart of an orca or sperm whale, a large marine crocodilian that hunted tinier sea dwellers. If ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs were the Mesozoic equivalent of dolphins and pinnipeds, then Cetiosaurus was the reptilian equivalent of the whales. Unfortunately for us, there is no life reconstruction of Owen's Cetiosaurus, at least not one that was made during the 19th century. However, I assume that, in his imagination, it would have looked quite similar to the Mosasaurus that was shown in Jurassic World. And another egregious example was uh, with the reconstruction of Diplodocus by Charles R. Knight, where it's where one is standing up and the other is like submerged in water, doing its best Ness impression. You even quote that joke, Destin. And I theorized that the second one was added to reinforce the idea that despite the other one on the left being drawn in a dynamic upright posture, uh, sauropods were still aquatic animals. That is my own hypothesis on this image, which I worked out when I was writing my bachelor's thesis uh, on the history of paleo art. Uh, of course, he couldn't have read that, but I reused that idea when I was writing my Soon book. Soon after, further life reconstructions were created, such as the well-known painting by Charles R. Knight for the American Museum of Natural History, which was overseen by Henry Fairfield Osborne. It is noteworthy that Osborne's conception of sauropod lifestyles and Knight's reconstruction differ somewhat. Osborne believed that sauropods were mostly aquatic creatures that only sometimes ventured on land. Therefore, the behavior shown here, standing on land raised onto the hind legs, is more of an uncommon event intended to astound museum visitors. The individual on the right seems to have been there on purpose to remind the audience of how this animal is meant to live. It's doing its best Nessie impression. Strangely, the one on the left fared better over time since most scientists concur that diplodocids could rear up on their hind limbs. In fact, some contend that this is how they most often explored treetops. The and apart from that, there were just whole as sentence structures and passages taken from my blog and just slightly rewritten. Like, you can't call this a paraphrase, this was just 
copy pasting and then using uh, thesaurus on a few words to hide what you did. And everything taken together, I realized this was just my own writing being read back to me. But neither me nor my blog are mentioned at the beginning of the video. They're not mentioned throughout the video. They're not mentioned at the ending of the video. In fact, there are no references at the end of the video, now that I think about it. And I am not even linked in the video's description, which, even if that it's kind of shitty to do, that would have been the least thing he could have done. And, and I realize, okay, this is just, this is borderline, not, not just borderline, this is just plagiarism, as it is currently. And the first thing I did was I downloaded the video in case I needed evidence later and he deletes it, which he later did. We will get to that. Through a Google Drive link, I will maybe post that video here in the description so you can compare and contrast yourself. Then I write him a very, like, calmly written Gmail where I ask him, dude, this is way too similar. What is going on here? Can we sort this out? And because I don't, I don't expect anyone to check their emails 24 seven. I also left a YouTube comment that in hindsight was worded way too kindly, if I'm being honest. And I didn't take a screenshot of my comment, but I wrote it in my, U uh, my iPhone notes before I posted it. So here's the text. And I did, but I did uh, screenshot his reply and my reply to that, which you can see here. Yeah, um, regarding that reply, first two props to him. Uh, good that he it's good that he replied so quickly, that's good. And second, uh, it's appreciative that he took direct responsibility for this. You know, like the Edge channel, it usually presents itself as a team of creators. So it would have been quite easy for him to say, oh, like one of my writers fucked up and you know, like shift the blame that way, kind of what happened that Cinemassacre with the whole Monster Madness fiasco. But him taking full responsibility is also where things get really weird because his explanation for why this isn't plagiarism is that he thought he had made a segment where he credits me and simply forgot to put it in the video. And this is just bonkers. He says, he just simply forgets sometimes to credit people. And that's a, like, that's a really ballsy thing to state on a, you, from a channel that makes such academically geared videos. Like you don't just forget to put credit somewhere, you know, that's not, that, that, that's, that's no good in the words of Sonic the Hedgehog. So at first I didn't think too much about this because again I wanted to avoid drama and I just said, I just replied, okay then maybe just re-upload the video with the missing section. And after that I posted a comment, I, like the millisecond after I thought about it, I added, I edited my comment to add an extra sentence where I pointed out, wait, this doesn't make much sense. But I think he didn't read that because by the time I already did that edit, he had privated the video. So none of the comments could be read anymore. And now, of course, a very bad picture is starting to emerge. Because first, firstly, if this video was really meant to be originally uh, an adaptation, an explicit adaptation of my blog post, 
it would have been more obvious throughout the whole video instead of just a single segment at the beginning that you can accidentally uh, cut away. Again, because the ideas that I present as my own would have been presented as my own in the video and not as Destin's own ideas. Secondly, I would have obviously been linked in the description at the very least, like I said. And thirdly, um, this was actually not my first interaction with the Edge channel. In 2021, Destin sent me an email where he asked me if it was okay for him to make a video partially based off one of my first blog posts, which was about the outdated idea of kangaroo kicking dinosaurs. And I said, hey, this is cool. A large YouTube channel wants to make a video about one of my blog posts. And I even offered him some help and he did send me the script. The script, honestly, Nine said it was just a re slightly rewritten version of my blog post, but I was fine with it at the time, again, because I was gonna get credit. Yeah, I proofread it for him. I pointed out some mistakes. For example, my name was uh, miswritten as TV Sifgin. And also there were some sections that were uh, still accurate when I was writing my blog post, but already inaccurate when he was trying to make the video. And I pointed this out to him and he said, oh, don't worry, that will be corrected. And yeah, then fast forward two months and the video is out and none of the promised edits have happened except that he corrected my name, but again wrongly as TK Sigin. <laughs> uh, it's like that episode in Spongebob where everyone gets Squidward's name wrong. But I, I'm used to it. I'm used to pe people just not getting my name correctly. And I was just happy to be mentioned in the video. How, anyway, how this is relevant to the current situation is uh, if Edge really had wanted to make another adaptation of one of my blog posts, wouldn't he have informed me again, like he did here in the first time? Like, why was I not informed of such a major video using me as their main source? Why was I not asked for permission? And yeah, everything taken together, like, I really want to believe Destin that he just made a mistake because I want to avoid drama and any ill feelings. But everything taken together, it really looks like he initially legit tried to plagiarize me and get away with it. And now he's just doing damage control. And again, I really want to be wrong about this because this is such an uncomfortable situation for everyone involved. But if it is true that this has happened before to other people, then it's very hard to see this as a mistake. So, um, what are we going to do about this situation? How are we going to move forward? While I was recording this video, uh, Destin sent me a reply to my email, where he basically asked if that single edit at the beginning of the video is enough to salvage it, to satisfy me, so to say. And thinking back, honestly, I don't think that is enough. Because Destin, you did much more than just paraphrase me. You basically copied my text and just changed some words around so it isn't that so it wouldn't be that obvious. That is like beginner's level of avoiding plagiarism detection. If you were caught doing this for a university paper, they would throw you out of academia. So I guess the only way you could salvage this video is if you 
outright presented it as an as a direct adaptation of my work. But then you would also have to cut out uh, or rewrite and replace all of the moments where you present my own thoughts as your own. So going forward, I guess the only way you could sensibly and rightfully uh, salvage this video is if you just redid it from the ground up by yourself. If you maybe use uh, less examples, like less niche stuff. And if, of course, but if you rewrote the whole text by yourself with proper citations, of course. But even if you did that, I would still want to make and upload this video here because I do not want this situation to just be swept under the carpet in private. Because, again, like if, if this is the worst case scenario, then this is plagiarism and it has to be called out in public. And in the best case scenario, this is still gross incompetence and people should know incompetence is happening at a channel that presents itself as educational. And at this point, let me just clarify what I do not want this video to be. This is not an attack and I don't want any viewer to send hate or attacks towards Edge. I want to be constructive, not destructive. This is this video is more meant to be a wake-up call for Destin to just do better. Because I know he can do better. He, I know he can ask for permission. I know he can give credit. I'm not even angry or hateful about this whole situation. I'm mostly just perplexed that it happened at all. Like Because, to be honest, the past year has been really shitty to me. Um, I've been going to therapy for my depression. My partner left me because of my autism diagnosis. My grandfather passed away due to lung cancer related issues. Kids, please do never smoke. Um, the book I've released has unfortunate, unfortunately not been selling as well as I hoped. And a few weeks ago, my Instagram account got hacked and I had to completely delete it. So, some minor YouTube drama is nothing compared to all of this shit that's happening right now. This isn't, this isn't even the first time I have been plagiarized. A few years ago, there was this whiny little bitch on Discord that tried to steal some of my alien designs, but that's small fries. Yeah, complete side note, this is also why I haven't been uploading many videos lately or writing a lot of stuff on my main blog. All plus, um, also I'm just spending more time working at the museum, plus a lot of my creative energy is just flowing into my spec evo stuff. So uh, sorry to you guys about that. I hope you understand me. So I hope you are all doing well and also a big thank you to all of my readers and viewers and best friends for just helping me pull through all of this.